please welcome to the stage, Connor Haffernan. Thank you very much. Hi everyone, my name is Connor, and up until about two minutes ago, this seemed like a fantastic idea. <laughs> but as Jessamyn said, I'm currently doing a history PhD at University College Dublin. If arts degrees are a joke, then my PhD is surely the punchline. <laughs> Except no one is laughing, my parents still don't really understand it, and I'll probably be crying at the end of it. But, oh, that's very sad. But I love it, honestly I do. You learn so much about life, yourself, and well, obviously the past when you do a history PhD. Just this week I learned that the first Irish bodybuilding show was in 1901. Last month I learned that army instructors actually taught PE in schools for roughly about 70 years. And earlier today, what I thought was a good friend of mine told me that the number of jobs for history students with a PhD gets smaller every year. <laughs> Did you know that last one? I didn't. <laughs> so what exactly am I studying? What am I wasting four years on? Well, I'm here to tell you about a very serious, it's a very important topic. And while some researchers, they like to hide their research away from the public, I'm here to tell you that if you want to make money and actually make a difference, you should copy me and study physical culture in Ireland from 1890 to 1939. <laughs> that wasn't a joke. That's four years of my life. So the humbling laughter suggests that I have a little bit of explaining to do. So physical culture emerged in the late 19th and early 20th century and is largely concerned with bodily cultivation. It is bodybuilding, gymnastics, keep fit, yoga, calisthenics, slimming down, toning up, long before we had those terms. I am, ladies and gentlemen, studying the immortal desire to look better naked. <laughs> Which is quite a cool thing, I think we can all agree. I mean, just imagine your great-grandmother or grandfather looking in the mirror, sucking in their stomachs, grabbing at love handles, and wondering what to do next. God bless my late grandfather, he was still doing that well into his 90s. Sadly, it was always in public. But the impulse or the desire to look at yourself in the mirror and wonder what in the name of God have you done largely drives my research. So that's the, you know, textbook, dictionary definition of physical culture. But how can we understand physical culture in a more intimate sort of way? Well, we're going to conduct a very small experiment. So scientists scoffing at the idea of a historian conducting an experiment. Hold your horses. Historians conduct experiments as well. Only there's never a lab. It's never scientific. And it always requires copious amounts of alcohol. <laughs> now, to do this, I'm going to need just two things. So one an enthusiastic audience, which I think we have. <laughs> Two, a little bit of exercise. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is why we're in a problem today, people. So the thing I love about physical culture is that we can get a real feel for the subject matter that's simply impossible in other forms of history. So in the interest of method history, as it were, we're going to run through some exercises from the time. Now these exercises come straight from the playbook of Bernard McFadden, an eccentric American physical culturist famed for declaring that weakness is a crime, don't be a criminal. And <laughs> I for one would hate to think of any strength criminals in the audience. So we're going to work out like it's 1899 and we're going to have a hell of a lot of fun doing it. So in the first instance, I want everyone to place their right hand out like this with the palm facing up. And now join your left palm into your right palm. So, like this. And on the count of three, I want you to push those two hands together as hard as you can. Ready? One, two, three. Whoa, fantastic. And now let's move it on to the other side. So left hand out like this. Right palm into left. And again, one, two, three. Push them together. Come on, build the biceps. Come on. Fantastic. And we're nearly done, I promise. So we built, we built up the biceps. We're going to do some jumping jacks as well. It's going to be amazing. So bring the two hands together in front of your chest like this. And again, last time, I promise. One, two, three. Push them together and relax. So you've all just passed, you know, an early 1900s fitness class. But we've built up the glamour muscles now. And thankfully, we're in the middle of a glorious Irish summer, which, as anyone who has been to the gym knows, sun's out, guns out. If you're from Dublin as well, it's also sun's out, huns out. But that's a different presentation. So we're going to finish in the most egotistical way possible our little fitness class. I want everyone to give me a lovely double bicep pose and a guttural ho. Huh. You ready? One, two, three. Oh. Woo. Fantastic. So give yourselves a round of applause. <laughs> the energy and fitness was amazing. And I'm sure this will carry on into years of health and yoga classes. 
So that's the fun side of physical culture, but obviously I don't get to do that on a day-to-day -day basis. Most of what I do is actually quite boring. I'm going through government reports, newspapers, magazines, journals, articles, etc., looking for information on individual and group exercise habits. But this can at times pay dividends. Did you know WB Yeats was a physical culturist? He believed it increased his vital energy. Not really sure what that means. <laughs> Similarly, Joseph Plunkett, the man executed in the 1916 Rising, began lifting weights after someone called him skinny. My suspicion is that they might have been English. <laughs> Now, for those of you wondering, this is largely how my dissertation is being written. Just anecdotes. <laughs> Lots of anecdotes. Though, that bit can be a little bit blasé at times, but there are exciting moments in my research. And indeed, probably the most exciting part of my research comes from an old collection of bodybuilding magazines from the early 1900s. Now, produced in England, but read in Ireland, these magazines are treasure troves for my research. There's just one little problem. So, these are bodybuilding magazines, right? So obviously it's a lot of images of half-naked men and women in bikinis or fig leaves flexing and posing their muscles. Now that's fine, it's a little bit creepy on my part, but that's, that's not really the issue. The problem is that I study in public libraries, in the UCD library or the National Library in Kildare Street. Oh, it gets better, don't worry. This, this is my lived reality. So owing to a back problem, I have to use a standing desk. So whenever I'm looking at these magazines, they're always at head height, where everyone else in the library behind me can see them, meaning that I'm now 90% sure that I'm the library pervert people keep talking about. But on the bright side, my trench coat has never gotten this much attention. So why would we bother studying physical culture? Still not sure, but I have some answers. And Obviously, the pervert angle is probably the most appealing, but it's not the only one. So when we study physical culture in Ireland, it can tell us about broader societal messages within Ireland. So studying physical culture in Ireland can tell us about gender in Ireland in the early 1900s. Why did men need to be strong and muscular? Why did women need to be slim and dainty? It can tell us about educational policy in Ireland. Why were army instructors barking the orders at small children for 70 odd years? It can tell us about nationalism. Why did Michael Collins, Patrick Pierce, Joseph Plunkett care so much about men strengthening their bodies? And finally, it can tell us about the Irish nation itself. And you see, a lot of historical work likes to be negative or down on Irish history. Now it does. And I'm not saying that Ireland has a merry past. Far from it. But I think sometimes we need to step back and actually, you know, examine and evaluate the success stories. So I'll end in one example of how physical culture can actually tell us this. So, a hundred years ago, health experts, doctors, politicians, public health officials told us that the Irish were too malnourished as a people. They simply weren't eating enough. So, fast forward over a century to 2018, and people we look to for health advice, doctors, politicians, health officials, Kim Kardashian, they're, they're all telling us now that not only did the Irish eat enough, we're actually eating far too much. So if that's not a story of success, of overcoming the odds, <laughs> and of doing a, whatever is necessary to get the job done, I don't know what is. So my name is Connor Heffernan. You've been a fantastic audience. If you want to know any more, I have to plug my website, people. It's my, it's my livelihood. I'm a PhD student. Take that back 10 seconds. If you want to know any more about me or my research, please feel free to check out my website, physicalculturestudy.com, or talk to the guy in a trench coat in a library near you. Thank you very much.